Okay, I'm back. So let's go and go through the utilities, which is U for utilities. We're going to transfer from Wizard's Crown. And it says, yeah, you must have already have created discs for Return of Vigor. Did that. Must have Wizard's Crown disc one. Do you still wish to transfer your party? Yes. Insert disc one, okay. Return dress. Here's our Wizard's Crown data disc. Okay, books. Okay, and as you can see, we have it set to the highest difficulty. Sound is off. I think sound kind of caused causes desynchronization. So let's go ahead and press space bar, and we'll check out our party. Move this right. Okay. And there's our Wizard's Crown Party. Let me turn the delay to zero, or as low as possible. We'll check everybody out. Here's our X character. There's the guy that developed the flail for a little bit. And with the throw weapon skill, the value that we get is based off of double dexterity. So whatever we have in dexterity, multiply that by two, and that's our throw weapon skill. So of course this guy looks like he's gonna be the one to develop the status effect healing because he has treat poison treat disease and first aid nice first aid's max out treat poison should be sufficient treat disease yeah that's going to be a bit of a problem now each town has specific weapons and items that you can buy. So I'll kind of go over that once we reach that. It won't be for a while, of course. I think by about the fifth or sixth, maybe even the seventh game, we might be done with taking out the Necromancer. We'll see. Uh, I know this game definitely takes longer than a game year, not a literal year at least going through it anyway, but uh, I don't know exactly how long this is going to take me to go from start to finish, but we'll work on it and go from there. I'm not going to totally worry about it one way or the other. I mean, whatever happens, happens, so... Let's go ahead, let's see. Let's select who's the guy that has the best stealth and skill. I don't think it's him. 
I think it's A if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, looks like it. Diver Sorcerer. to, at least in my opinion, improve life very much for many of these characters. Of course, there will be spells and even attacks that will drain life from us, so we'll have to be a little bit mindful that that's what regeneration is for, so it'll get our life back to normal, so... Yeah, I'll definitely show you the weapons in each individual town and kind of make a comment on them. So they did add in other abilities besides transferring, like Paralyze is one, Venom is another. Then you can even have items with spells on them. Uh, for the most part, they're pretty generic, like Dizzing Rage or uh, Foxfire or stuff that has like low level spells on it so you're probably better off of to, you know using those particular spells or whatever with your sorcerers but and it's nice that uh, even like in wizard's crown you could have anybody use a particular item so or at least a magical item or like a staff or a scroll or whatever. If it casts a spell, then you can use it. So, same thing here. So, that pretty much applies. Alright, did I tell the tale where I'm not anchoring the tale anyway? Oh yeah, that's right. I was going to set my lead, so where's the set? That's right, we were checking which guy was it. It was this guy. The guy with the axe. She wanted to wear this skull and stuff. Yep, alright. I was thinking that this guy was, yeah, he's not a good point person. Yeah, this is the guy that will develop the thrown weapon because he doesn't have anything else. And this guy has a sword along with crossbow. Why didn't you give me a crossbow, darn it? I guess it thinks that we're too powerful. They gave us melee weapons that we're no good at for all of our ranged characters. So we're just going to be standing around until they can find weapons. But that's what milk and like wolves and undead would be for so in fact that's actually a very good idea is because we're getting such a small amount of experience that we want to maximize whatever return on investment that we get so Fortunately, our characters are fairly well developed already in specific skills, weapon skills, or what have you. Of course, they did change tactical combat a little bit too. I'll have to explain it when I get to that point. But 
trying to think of anything that I can say real quick. And overall, I think the game, this game's a little bit better than Wizard's Crown because Wizard's Crown, you're endlessly fighting monsters. There's no, no matter how much you clean out the city of Argon, there's always something around, basically. Whereas if once you clean it out, this, this game, that's pretty much it. There is no like reset or what have you. So, but there's, you know, I guess. At least I think, anyway, there's some uh, decent s stories, some interesting dungeons, things like that. But, you know, I'll discuss that when I get to those particular points. So, um, and I do realize that I did post on my channel about doing another game, but I'm trying to still kind of, I guess, from lack of a better phrase, play stealth mode. So, by doing the you know, YouTube videos for this game. I, I'm not expecting a lot of comments or views or what have you, so I think this is a fairly safe Let's Play session to go through without attracting too much attention and, you know, from people that, besides the people that are subscribing anyway or looking or what have you, so. Anyway. Uh, well, let me at least show you what the outside looks like real quick, and then I'll let you go. So, exit. We'll exit the tower. Yay. So, there's little white blotch north of us are mountains. The blue is the water. The little, I guess, orange is the forest, and then below that is, like, some swamp. But, uh, you know, I guess I can discuss that a little bit, too, when I uh, get to that point. But I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to let you go. Let me know what you think. I'll look forward to your comments, and I will talk to you on the next session of Let's Play Eternal Anchor. Until then, have a good time, and bye-bye.